Hi everyone, welcome back into the workshop. Today we're going to be working with this Game Boy Pocket that I've modified with a retro modding IPS screen. I made a short about this and it was all about how I upgraded it and my thoughts on the battery life and stuff like that. But to catch you up to speed, essentially, once I upgraded this, we now have this new shiny screen that can even change colors. It has 37 colors on it and I can adjust the brightness. So on the left of me, I have a variable voltage power supply. Now, I've set it to three volts. That's, you know, what this is officially rated at. And below, you can see two ticking numbers. And the bottom one is watts, which is a combination of the first two numbers, which are volts and amps. Now, the volts is going to stay constant because I've set it for the device. And the amperage is how much energy we're using. So the voltage times the amperage will give us our watts. Now, if we go all the way down to the base brightness, we can see that it kind of teeters around 160 milliamps. And we can cycle through the colors and see that it really doesn't change, which makes sense because this brightness slider essentially is adjusting the amount of amperage that's allowed through to the screen itself. That's how it's getting brighter. It's putting more juice through those pixels. Now, if we increase this all the way up, you'll see it tops out at 260. So in my short, I mentioned that that's a 60% increase. Also, again, there's 37 colors and two triple A's, each having a thousand milliamp hours in them, you'd think that would equate to 2000 milliamp hours, but actually they're in series, which means that since they're 1.5 volts each, they're connected to add their voltages together in series and make three volts. Because of this, their amperage, amperage hours, their milliamp hours, are the same. So even though they both have a thousand milliamp hours because they're connected tail to tail, you're not getting the benefit of the extra milliamp hours. What you're doing is you're stacking them to increase the voltage here. And so effectively, they have a range of 850 to 1200 milliamp hours, depending on the brand for alkaline batteries. I took a thousand milliamp hours as an example somewhere in the middle, and on low brightness, you're around six hours. And on high brightness, you're around 3.5. Now, that's the estimate. And here's where the detective work comes in. This screen is currently running at 3 volts. Not every battery that's a AAA will run all the way up to 3 volts. Some will actually start at 1.2, so that would equate to 2.4 volts when they're combined together. Now, on the original screen, this isn't that much of a problem, and anything that uses batteries has a tolerance limit. It has a range of, for say, two tri triple A's in series, from 3 volts all the way down to some point that it just cannot operate and it shuts off. According to the forms I've read for the IPS screens, this limit is much closer to 3 volts than it is on the original. And what this means is that when you use batteries, you can actually get this thing to shut off even faster. We know that the theoretical limits of three volts at these milliamp hours gives us this, but what'll happen is over our battery's lifespan as it's getting used, it'll drop its voltage. And so even if all the juice is not out of it, if that voltage, that combined voltage drops too far, it'll turn off the screen regardless. So we're gonna have to test that. By the way, a lot of people recommend if you do wanna go with the battery option to get lithium batteries or lithium rechargeables, they tend to start off at 1.5 volts and hold that and that way you'll actually get a lot more life out of them. So even though we have those estimates of 6 on the low and 3.5 on the high, I'd expect it to be a lot lower. What we'll also do eventually is we'll go ahead and try to tune down the voltage to see if we can find this spot that this screen ceases to work. But without further ado, let's actually just start running some tests and this is going to be very simple. The first test I'm going to crank this all the way up till it's its top brightness. And I haven't decided, but let's actually see if I take this game out. Because we want a standard amp draw, or as standard as we can get. So the CPU is doing less work because it's not playing a game, so we can see that it's at 255 ish and then all the way down we have 155 ish so again it's it's basically a hundred milliamp range between the low and the high watermark 
So let's start off with full bright. I'll make a note of all the numbers and stuff, and we're gonna swap these cables out. And instead, we're gonna put two fresh sealed Amazon Basics batteries in. But before we do that, we'll actually multimeter them and see if we can see what voltage they're at. So I have my multimeter here, and let's just get these arranged. So these are a fresh battery. I just took them out of the pack. Let me just get those on there. So it's actually really impressive for these Amazon Basics. 1.6 basically on that one, which is actually really good. And again, all these devices operate in an acceptable range. So even though it looks like these Amazon Basics are giving 1.6 volts, that'll be fine. That'll come out to 3.2 and anything that uses them should be able to handle that range. So that's really interesting. And I bet the crappy batteries I had in here before weren't, <laughs> weren't pulling that. So I'll be curious to see after it's drained what these are at as far as voltage goes. And that might actually give an indication of when the device will shut off. So that's pretty much it for now. Let's go ahead and I'll put them in the device. And then we'll go ahead and run a timer. And I'll get back to you. So the tests are done, and what have we concluded? Well, the estimates are way off, and let's talk about why that might be. We had an estimate of almost six and a half hours for the lowest brightness setting, and almost four hours for the highest brightness setting. In reality, we only got four hours out of the lowest, and only an hour and 20 minutes out of the highest. So that's not only a 300% difference almost between the two, that's greatly off our marks of where our estimates are. So why is that? If we assume the battery is 1,000 milliamps hours and we have the milliamps, why can't we calculate it? Well, one of the things is, is that the milliamp hours of a battery is very dependent on the load you're putting on it. So AAA batteries might be rated to 1,000 milliamp hours, but only if you're, you know, have it in a remote where you're only drawing 60 milliamps. If you're drawing high amounts of amperage, it could actually behave differently because you're changing the chemistry and you're changing how the electricity is flowing. You're forcing a lot more through and it be can become less efficient. And so essentially this is actually a major problem because when we install these IPS screens and I'm someone who likes everything very bright, we're talking about only an hour and 20 minutes. You know, that's not even a plane flight. So you better be carrying a lot of batteries with you. On the lowest settings, yeah, we, we almost get four hours, sure but it's not at a playable state. So it just goes to show you that these IPS screens are very demanding. And another thing is a lot of AAA devices can operate down to 0.9 volts, you know, like a clicker or something like that. And so you have that range from 1.5 down to 0.9. You can see these all ended when they shut off at around 1.2. And that's because this screen and this setup requires that. It can't go down to 0.9. So even if I take those dead batteries that just came out of this when it died and put it into another device that would be compatible with 1.2 volts or lower, it would work. So I could actually go use them for my clickers for a little bit of time. Of course, their lifespan is reduced, but you could do that. So this just goes to show you that this new high-powered screen is great, but it has a voltage requirement. And it also draws a lot of amperage, which makes our AAA is actually very, very inefficient. And what happens is you get pretty awful times. And so I think the conclusion of this video is, let's replace this. Let's take out these AAAs, at least replace them with rechargeable AAAs. But I think in a future video, we'll be doing a lithium ion upgrade and possibly even putting a USB-C port on the outside. So we don't even have to open it up and take it apart to charge it. That would be optimal. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Check out my channel for more videos like this, and I will see you later.